When you think of figure skating, you think of athletes performing intricate elements with ease and grace on the ice. But at the end of the day, our costumes are what make us sparkle. Skating for me was just like love at first glide. I mean, I watched my brother do it over and over and over again, and my mom just saw us so mesmerized by what they were doing, and you know, if that's even possible, you could fall in love with something so fast and so early, but for us, that's what it was, and we never wanted to stop. Like, if anybody put music on, we just wanted to move, so it was a crazy, crazy thing to start at two and a half. Paid off so far. I started loving my costumes at five years old. My mom, my mom was very creative as well. She loved putting us in random outfits and just making sure that we rocked something so unique and original. And I think with that, with skating, you're you're an artist and developing who you are on the ice and off the ice. It creates magic when you can bring both of those two things together and I've always had such so much input in my costumes and when I was 18 years old I quit skating and I happened to meet some fashion students in LA and when I got to know them and learn the process behind the fashion industry it really sparked my interest in being able to create something bigger than yourselves and to be able to interact with the crowd and you know, it's just a joy that I love and it's, it's my personality, it's me, and I feel like that's something that I've been destined to do. When it comes to designing my costumes, everything is done by me. I mean, I do the research. I mean, I have to kind of bring in all of my stuff and show my coach and be like, look, is this kind of what you like or is this what you, you are envisioning in the program? And she'll give me feedback. But everything is usually done by me and I, I don't know, I feel like a sense of accomplishment every time a costume is done and I'm just so excited for people to see like my new work every year. So fast forward to now, we are in a position to possibly go to the Olympic Games in 2018. So with that, we need to make sure that everything is perfect and that includes our costumes. This year our free dance is called Saudade. It's interesting modern piece and once we figured out what we wanted to do with the program I contacted my uh, costume designer Susie hello hey Susie how are you Hi, I'm fine how are you doing <laughs> I'm good not too bad hey so good. Paul and I are just in the process of making our new programs this year okay. and um in June, I'm coming back the last week, um, and I was wondering okay. if I could come and meet with you and just talk about, like, new ideas and what we're thinking. Oh, sure. Does that sound okay? And I think Paul and I are coming back in the last week of August, so we can do all, like, the final fittings and... Um, okay, so he's not coming with you in June, right? No, just me. Okay. Just okay. me. Is that okay? All right, we can make it work, yeah. Yeah? Absolutely. Yay! So what are you what are you thinking for this year? Um. Well, Paul and I have really two off wall programs. So the right now we're working on a Beatles short dance. So it's kind of all over the place. Uh, Carol kind of wants the whole Sergeant Pepper outfits. So that would be okay. kind of oh, fun. My. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That one's pretty normal. Um. And then the second one, um, is very modern. Um, we don't really know what to call it yet because it's still like so new, but I'm sure by the time we come in August, we'll have an idea. Um, okay. But it's 
abstract movement and the whole kind of story I guess is the I don't know Paul there's Paul and I kind of start as two separate people and then as the program gradually develops and is created we want to make sure that we kind of end as one person okay. so I don't know exactly how we're going to come up with some kind of outfit but by the time I come back in a couple of weeks I think I'll have something okay. up my sleeve <laughs> Is that okay? Yeah, it's interesting anyway. Yeah. It's always interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's always interesting. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah, so is that okay? Well, yeah, when you get your, when you get your flight, have your mom give me a call or okay. we'll set up a time. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Okay. Right. I'll see you soon. Thanks. Okay. Yep. Bye. Bye. I started working with Susie, I think, when I was old. Or 12, um, we had a ballroom um, teacher come in and work with us on the ice. And one day, our coach actually asked him, was like, Where do you get your costumes done? And so there was a lady that was just about 20 minutes away from the rink, and um, we met her. And she has a ballet background, so she can make incredible tutus. And she she does so many different things with so many so many companies. And figure skating was something that she was really interested in and she made a few costumes but I don't know there's just something about her she just gets my idea and she gets what I like to do and I think she really enjoys the fact that we try to push the limits every time and it's kind of fun, a fun project for her every year but we we know she can do it and we know she can handle it so I think that's why I can rely on her and it, being able to rely on someone to create something of your vision that's stuck in your head and put it out into in fabric and I think is so special and I, I love her to death. <laughs> Comfort is a huge factor in skating. Um, I mean, if you have to wear something that you're afraid it's too low, you know, the straps you keep adjusting on, you can't, I mean, you can't possibly skate um, focused on the skating. You're worried about your costume fitting. So I think it's very important that you find a, like a costume designer something that you know, you know, the clasp isn't going to open, or the straps are nice and fitted, um, you know, it's got elastic in there, it's not going like, to expose you in any way, so you feel comfortable. When we started working with Susie, we found that there were a lot more people who were interested in what she can do, and, you know, I think she's getting a lot more recognition from all the things that she has done because she's got international athletes showing her products and her costumes, so we really hope that what we have created together can really continue to make her business grow. Much like fashion in general, I think you uh, sometimes pay for a name. That's that's true, but you are always getting a good quality when you you know you hire someone who's reputable to do your costuming. Um, I, I would personally probably rather spend a little bit more knowing that I'm going to have a good quality costume because this is something that you're going to be wearing upwards of fifty times a year. So. I think it's a, it's a really important part of the performance and, and it's usually good to invest in that. In lots of ways you, you get what you pay for in terms of a good quality, in terms of a rich fabric, a clever design. I think that's the most important thing. Really the dollars, to me it's immaterial. I mean you can get a simple beautiful dress in crushed velvet with you know some rhinestones or Swarovskis or whatever on it. But if it's cut well, it speaks volumes. When I'm doing research for my costumes, you can find inspiration anywhere. You can find it in society, you can find it in the trends on the runway, and you can find things in history. I think if you sit there and really start to draw in influences from all these different people and places and things, um, you can really create something so much more special. There's so much life and beauty in everything, so if you just take a look around you, you can explore so many options. Just recently in skating, a rule came into effect that skaters, individual skaters can skate to lyrics. Now that was something that existed in dance, but in singles it was, it's something quite new. And I think that really um, affected the look of costumes in a sense because now we're having pop music. Pop music is being introduced to competition and, and I think a lot of trends that are happening on the runway or you know in general are starting to appear in costuming because it's so current and it, it makes the program, I guess, a little more um, modern. <laughs> After calling Susie, um, I went back home and I went on my computer and did a little bit of research myself and tried to figure out something that 
I wanted to do, but it's all a group effort. And so my coach actually found a picture and she just fell in love with the idea and um, she sent it over to me. And you know, when you find something that like the costume, it was just so unique and bizarre. And, and you're like, how am I going to figure this out on the ice? And from there, we sent the picture over to Susie and she got an idea for it. And you know, she uh, sketched the costume on a body. And, she did that. I went home. Uh, she had a prototype leotard already for me, and uh, she got her blue little marker, kind of drew things on me just so she can kind of figure out where things should sit. And once she gets that, she goes and makes the first draft, and um, she'll put a skirt on it. And uh, once you get the skirt on, you start to cut it in the ankle and you know where you want to have it gathered. And we end up using a lot of the mistakes that we make along the way, and it's not something that was planned but I think sometimes that's life like nothing is planned so and you can develop and feed off of those things and once that's done she usually just kind of does all the finishing touches and then she'll um, send the costume to me here in Toronto and um, you know she'll send me home with all the crystals and um, that I want and the glue and then I kind of go to town my costumes um, I do my stoning every year and it's something that I really love to do very relaxing and to have a little piece of myself on the dress I think is what really makes me sparkle and what makes me feel so confident when I step out onto the ice. Personally, um, in terms of the costume itself, I was always very sensitive to the weight of it. I, th I found that if the costume was too heavy it would affect my jumps. Uh, another factor would be does it stretch? Um, a lot of designers don't like to use stretch fabrics because they're a pain in the butt to work with. However, a stretch fabric is kind of crucial in figure skating because of flexibility and all the movements that we do. So I usually find that if I'm not using a stretch fabric then it has to fit perfectly. Like there's no ifs, ands, or buts. But uh, a stretch fabric will be a lot more forgiving. The fabrics that are ideal for skating costumes are lycras, velvets, hologram, sequent, there's a ton of variety nowadays to choose from, so anything with a stretch is perfect for skating. After a couple fittings in Colorado, my dress is finally competition ready. There's something so exciting about seeing your vision come to life on the ice, and it makes me so confident and so excited to be able to go out and compete for the first time. All of our practice run-throughs with the costume on went amazing, you know, the costume felt great, it fit perfect, so I'm just ready to go out into the ice for the first time and compete. When the time came, the costume we felt was perfect. It did exactly what we wanted it to do. It turned heads, it made people think outside the box. But we just felt like there was something missing and we just needed a change. So we called Susie for some help. Hello. Hey, how are you? I'm doing fine. Thank yeah. you. I'm all right, Bye. you know. Um, so we just got back up <laughs> from France, um, was which scary. was an interesting event, <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, yeah I'm, glad, I'm so glad you're okay. Yeah, me too. Us that's too. <laughs> Us too. So we obviously didn't get to do the free dance, but yeah. um, our judge came up to us after and uh, kind of like threw us off guard a little bit because she was like, well, I really like this costume. But there's a problem with everybody wearing the same colors this year with the black and the gray and the white. Yeah, yeah, so, I saw that. Yeah, I saw so, that. I mean, we didn't really want to go with color because we wanted to make sure that the program stood out on its own. But, mm -hmm. I mean, the one we liked the best was the, like a red, but more of like a tomato red. So, I don't know if okay. we can find any fabric. I know that color. That's a, that's a, that's a big change. Yeah. That is a big change. Are you changing all of it? Um, I mean, well, like, we were thinking about just changing the skirt, but then Carol wanted uh -huh. to change the sleeves and have black sleeves instead of the nude. So I think okay. by the time we change everything, I think having a new dress would be probably the best idea. Okay, but you're not going, about that. are you going red on the leotard as well? Uh, no, I think we're going to just keep the, the top with the black. And then okay. just changing the color of the skirt. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you think we can do that in three days when I come home yeah, for Christmas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And how quickly do you need to have this? Mm -hmm. For nationals? Like, <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Ok
Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, no, it's fine. We'll make it happen. Okay. Okay. The concept we want to keep, but we want to just get a little bit more warmth and something that makes us look a little bit more powerful and eye-catching and all of that stuff. Reddish, orangish will make you stand yeah. out for sure. It's a fiery color. <laughs> yeah. No, I think it'll be fine. Yeah. I think it'll be fine. Yeah. Which will so be good. We'll work on that and start with the, start with the fabric choice. Okay. Yep. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, okay. Susie. You're welcome. You're bye. Okay. okay, bye. I think a costume uh, can actually make or break a performance to, to a degree. And it, it, when you put something on that just feels good, you get good feelings. And so that enhances right away um, your performance. A bad costume can be distracting if it's pinching or pulling. Then, if you're feeling less than in it, if it doesn't feel right, um, and I've done that too, you kind of go out there and you feel like you're pretending. You feel like you're trying to, you know, it takes such work to muster the confidence to pull it off when you feel like you look like second class. So, yeah, I think it's really, really important. It doesn't have to be expensive. It just has to be smart. I think as a skater, when you go on the ice, your, your job, obviously, besides the technical content in your program, is to tell a story. You want to weave a story and, and have a lasting effect. I think a lot of things play into that, music, choreography, but of course costume is also a, an integral part of the whole performance. So it's really important that you spend the time and make the decisions that will help um, maximize your performance. Because skating isn't just a sport, it's also an art form, there's a lot of focus on body image and, you know, making sure that you are beautiful. And I think that's one thing that costumes can help with. And the sport is just, it's been like that for years and years and years. And I don't think that that idea of being beautiful is going to change. So having a costume that makes you feel beautiful on the inside out I think really gives you the confidence to battle all of the pressures of this sport. When I was skating, um, I was 5'6", and the average height for female skaters would have been 5 foot at best. And uh, I'm also very broad in the shoulders and narrow in the hips. So everything that a figure skater typically is, I wasn't. So I was very conscious of that. So I always tried to draw away from the shoulders. So the designs, and I got very into it towards the end of the career, uh, to sort of pull in the shoulders and then started adding on skirts to accentuate the hips. And so, yeah, I played with a lot of that. But I was very lucky in terms of weight. Uh, because I was long in the legs, people kind of were off my back, whereas a lot of skaters, it was down to every pound. Growing up as a male figure skater, it's definitely, I mean, even still being an adult male figure skater, there's, there's a certain stereotype that comes along with it, a stigma. Growing up was a little hard to kind of not know how to um, convey why I was doing it, uh, be able to stand up for what I was doing as well. And, um, you know, I always liked it. I've, I've always liked costumes. I mean, I, I wore a Batman outfit probably six days a week when I was a kid. Uh, hop over fences wearing a Superman cape. I've always been like that. It kind of made sense for me to be a figure skater, but to me it's just part of what we do. It's, uh, it's the same as choreography. It's the same as uh, the jumps. It's, it's part of the whole package. There are many elements that you need to keep in mind. The color, the design, the silhouette, the crystals, and all the different trends. I mean, it all comes into play on making you feel confident on the ice. With the right combination of elements, that can be the key to a perfect performance. And I think that's why we made the change to the new costumes. I think color does affect a skater's performance. Um, it depends on the skater, but I do know that like some skaters hate certain colors or aren't too keen on it, or maybe they had a bad experience one year wearing a blue dress, so they definitely don't want to go blue again. So I think there's a lot of, uh, a lot of things like psychologically that affect a, a skater, and I think color definitely one of them. Wearing a certain color can affect your mood and um, I always felt actually um, felt really confident when I was wearing red so that sort of became some a color that I would generally gravitate towards. Now it wouldn't dictate the only like that I wouldn't always wear red but it was certainly a color that I was drawn to um, and it can affect your mood. I think when you're looking at yourself in the mirror before you go up to compete you want to feel confident you want to feel comfortable. 
Um, so I think that really could affect, uh, could affect your performance psychologically. Going into nationals, we had this big secret. Nobody knew anything about it. So when we were able to really step onto the ice and really show everybody what we kind of did, it really shocked people. And it, it gave us this confidence and this fire to be like, all right, you know, we can reinvent ourselves every time. And that made us really excited to perform it. I think the costume change that we did was a huge success. And I think the costume that we have right now is pretty fierce and amazing. And going through this process, it's really made me realize how much impact our costumes have on our program. And I think that's really our key to success. Uh, I think the fact that we are a performance sport, we're not only showing athleticism, we're competing with artistry and we're trying to capture the audience and the judges attention and transport them for three minutes five minutes however much time we have and I think the outfits really tie it together it's the same as if you're watching a you know a periodic movie or a play and everyone's dressed for that theme it, it makes sense it ties everything together and I think um, visually it, it makes it easier for the audience to be able to connect with what they're watching and I think as an athlete I feel when I put on my outfit I'm like okay you know I am that person it's go time and uh, I think it it's kind of what makes skating unique. As I matured I really realized how much it can affect. I really felt confident I knew that if the costume suited the program and I looked good in the costume that I felt good I felt confident uh, and I would, as a habit, I would look at myself in the mirror right before I would go out, just sort of give myself a pep talk. It sounds kind of crazy, but it was my thing. Uh, and uh, looking at myself in the mirror, I wanted to feel confident. And I wanted to be in that, that zone where you just feel like not, nothing, can, nothing can go wrong because I feel good. Having this knowledge moving forward makes me very excited to see what the future holds. So check us out in 2018 because that's going to be my best.